Hey guys, and welcome to my channel. I hope y'all are having a wonderful day. The weather has just been uh, super. It hasn't been too terribly hot, but the humidity here is just a killer, even on days that it just reaches barely 90 degrees. So today, uh, what I have for you is gonna be a triple berry cobbler. Most generally, when I make a cobbler, it's gonna be a blueberry cobbler, or a blackberry cobbler. I have a, just a little bit each left of some different berries. So I've got some blueberries, I've got some blackberries, and I have some strawberries. So I just threw it all in a bowl, mixed it with some sugar, and let those juices release. I'm going to add a little bit of flour in with that, so that will be my thickening agent. So why don't y'all come with me and watch me finish assembling, and then we're going to top it off either with some heavy whipping cream or some vanilla ice cream. I've got my oven preset at 375 degrees. I've already got my pan that I'm going to be making my cobbler in. I put some butter in the box and I put some butter in it, stuck it in the oven to melt it. In this bowl here, I've got my berries soaking in sugar to release those wonderful juices. Going to add about, I would say about three tablespoons of flour this is just going to act as my thickening agent for the blackberry cobbler. You can use any thickening agent that you want. I just happen to have flour. I know that is what I have on hand. Alright, so we have that going there. Now let's make the batter. I'm gonna take the remainder of that and I've got about one and three-fourths cup of flour. I've got about one cup of sugar here, half a cup of butter. Let's in, add about a teaspoon of vanilla. one egg. Now let's give this a stir. All right, let's go ahead and add in about a, about a half a cup of water to start with. I'm going to add in about a half a cup of water. Add just a little bit more. flavors are there. I believe it could use just a little more vanilla. This is a very simple batter mix. Remember, I like to cook with ingredients that you're going to have in your pantry. And all of these ingredients is something that you should have in just your basic food pantry. I'm just making sure everything is stirred really well. I've had some butter browning in the oven. I'm just going to spoon in, I would say, 
four or five tablespoons of the cake mix. Then using my dipper, I'm just going to spread around that cobbler. I'm just gonna spoon on more. Now if you have extras left over, just go ahead and make you another pan of this because this is really gonna be a winner and you can't go wrong with having too much cobbler. Gonna stick it in our preheated oven. I do have mix left over. I do have a pie pan that I'm gonna put this in and we're just gonna give it a good spray. Gonna put on here what we have left over. Now it's obvious that this one has got a lot less batter, but it's still gonna thicken up nicely. So y'all are in a special place inside of my home. This is my sewing room. And uh, this room has literally been a catch-all. It has been a total disaster. And um, we have spent some time slowly going through multiple boxes in this room and carefully making sure that nothing of value is being thrown away. All of these boxes is just full of things. We are going to have a yard sale and I've been going through them 
washing things up and cleaning them and uh, getting ready to have a yard sale. So as y'all could tell, this room is very purple. We had a host student from Germany about 11 years ago and this room has never ever had a color change since then, but it's fixing to. This room, we are going to paint it gray and I've got some new curtains that we're going to be putting up on that window and over here. And all of this that you see here is just bags of like broken glass and trash and stuff. It will be gone tomorrow to the dump. Here is my sewing cabinet. This arm right here folds out this way so I am able to put a sewing machine here, a sewing machine here. When this is cleaned off, this is a nice cutting area. You're not going to believe it, but this dresser right here is full of patterns along with this closet still needs to be cleaned out is loaded with patterns and upstairs in the office is loaded with totes of patterns there's more down here <clears throat> i have this white table right here that will expand on both sides and it will be a really nice cutting table and it's actually going to move over here this is an antique iron press and uh, it does work and it is what I use to run my stuff through to iron it. So as y'all can tell, I still have a lot of work to get this little bit of area cleaned off, but it won't take long. As you can see, here is just a few of my sewing patterns. Some of my sewing notions. But yeah, this should look so different. There's another antique piece of furniture that is an heirloom furniture. I need to get the backing put on it and get that mirror up where it belongs. But I will just give y'all a sneak peek in these couple of drawers of my sewing patterns. As y'all can see, they are just, I mean, as deep as the drawer. Same thing here. These are just full of vintage sewing patterns for adults. Vintage sewing patterns for farm animals. These are not so vintage, but I still like them. Here's some more. Here's. Looks like there's another apron. outfits here you go here's some of the kid vintage patterns that I have they're everywhere there's more upstairs there's some more kind of older maybe about a size 12 or so but yeah have a real problem when it comes to patterns especially the vintage ones how cute is that look at that house robe for a little girl y'all probably recognize some of these patterns here's some of my quilting books There's more down here in another drawer. Um, it's just full. You can see more sewing patterns. But yeah, 
I guess you would say I probably have a problem, but I think I got these at an auction, and so there's multiple sizes of some of these patterns. Here you go, some more of the little kid stuff that I have. Just a few that I have in my cabinet here. Those are just precious. Here's some up here. And you see how deep that is. This is what it looks like all the way down with craft and sewing books. Here's my table. You can see the edge of it here. And it goes all the way here. About right there. So, got a nice area to work on. But I'll be glad when I could get this one up and to work with it as well. And of course, this closet has got to be cleaned out because I know... There is tons of sewing stuff in here that needs to be gone through. A lot of things that need to be thrown away. Things that I've kept over the years that really don't need much of anything. I just kind of put it up to get it out of the way. But I hope that within the next two, three weeks, this room will be transformed into a sewing room. Yeah, I'll be glad when this whole pile of stuff right here is cleaned up and gone too. Well, there you go. Two very magnificent looking cobblers. They kind of have more of your cake consistency, but these are gonna be super good. We're gonna let them cool off just a little bit and we're gonna top them with vanilla ice cream or your choice of cool whip or you could just leave them plain all right well it's time to serve up a dish of cobbler here it's just the way i like it just a little cakey here and it's throughout the whole thing so yeah you're going to get a nice good helping of cobbler with a little bit of vanilla ice cream. That sounded so good. Very, very good.